would win in fact. Today, we'll be discussing on the issues of observing in research. Specifically, you know that when this presentation is having different aspects of research that goes with the planning, qualitative research, quantitative research, experimental psychology, observer behavior, participant organization, and trust participant organization, research methods and advantages, covert observation, covert observation, methods of participant observation, sample observation and guides, case studies, intensive study of a single unit, contact analysis. Now, although the content you are seeing that one, these are actually quite, this particular content is, other than the content is quite exhaustive in nature, but this is a kind of holistic approach we are going to make here to deliver the different aspects of research or rather in a very natural we will to tell you what are the different aspects that are already uh, included in research and particularly many of you know that one that is the research observation for this one it starts with the proper planning and proper planning in that case whenever you are going for any kind of social research so first and foremost thing is that you have to choose the samples out of the population you have to choose sample mathematically proportionately and not whimsically they like that if I have taken 10 percent I have taken 5 percent I have taken 2 percent it's not like that so practically speaking whether your sample is rationally correct or mathematically correct and it goes with the proportion or rather the population itself or not that is the most important thing and once you have that sample in your hand now you have to go for the method uh, you are going to apply that is what kind of method so if your research is social research and if your research is rather the area study if your research is the field research if your research is the experimental research if your research is somehow you can say trace studies longitudinal studies then you first you have to go for the planning that is observation of the data raw data or rather the sample is very important and here the first and foremost point is rather the determination of who and what will be observed the same thing is like that when if you go for the document research or other reference or documentary research or other metrics or web study or whatever it might be the first thing is that you have to select that one that is what you are going to observe and or rather who you are going to observe specifically for the studying of people or rather the study of a particular community a particular group in that case you have to choose your samples and then you have to go for that one and you have to determine that one what would be the rationality whether you will be using the random sampling or rather you will be going for the stratified sampling or whether you will be going for the quota sampling or rather purposive sampling class study so anything so you have to choose first that is who will be observed and the second thing is that determination of when and where this observation will be made when and where this observation will be made this is very important because the particular group your group, your selected group uh, with whom you are going to perform your observation from method or rather your target group with whom you are going to study so that particular group, the group um, here you see determine where and when observation will be made in this case what is we are saying that once you see the population from the population the sample you have chosen this particular sample may have the varied nature because of their occupation, because of their availability, because of the social culture, because of the social belief, because of the social distancing, all like that, different aspects. So obviously, whenever you are selecting that one, you have to choose the right thing that is right time and place also when and where are you rather going to their place or rather are you observing them directly by presenting yourself with them or rather you will be just a kind of passive observer so without um, 
including yourself within that particular sample community. Develop and pilot the observation guide whenever you are going for observing something you must have a guide. Guide means that is what will come after what, whom to observe first, whom not to, and what are the different things that we are going to observe, what are the criteria or the parameters you have included in your research and obviously your observation based on that particular aspect. It's not like that you have kind of some kind of stray things you just collected and accumulated and as soon as I say that one like already observed or uh, my sample has already studied. You can't do that like that way. <clears throat> and train the observers and have them practice if required you can have to go for that one that is observers, those who are observers. You can say that one that is what you are going to observe and what you are actually practices. So in this case train your observers and have them practice. So train for any particular purpose. So it's not that so you are actually sponsoring your instructor thing, whether you are uh, saying the answers for some Questions you be asking and they are at this time sitting uh, like a certain machine, stuff like that. <coughs> but you have to train them. That is, when it is something will be asked, how you will have to respond within what particular time they have to respond because these observations might be recorded, might be kept, um, preserved. So, this is other than conducting the observation and obviously, the next thing is that you have to analyze and interpret the collected information. And you know, we have two different types of research. The first one is uh, a qualitative research, second one is a quantitative research, or other you can say the first one is a quantitative research, second one is a qualitative research. If you go for the quantitative research, you know. so here the data is usually numerical, so we always want to quantify that one. Quantification of something. Because you see, at least you have to, at the end, you have to represent something. So whenever you are going for quantification of data, whenever you are going for quantification of data, so in this case data is presented in the form of English measurement, or use of measurement, and the goal is validation of facts and relationship by analyzing this the presented data in the different areas. It can be categorical, it can be ranked. No problem. It can be categorical, it can be ranked, it can be used to construct graphs and tables and you know different types of statistical records, content analysis, coded observations, all these things are the parts of quantitative research. In terms of quantitative research, what you actually do, you actually go and ultimate output is rather quantifiable. So you are presenting your data or rather the research extract or the research output in the form of some data and you are analyzing that data and and from that data, you were trying to go for uh, some validation of facts, and you were trying to establish a relationship now the different parameters you have chosen. And regarding the next one, the qualitative one, so we can go for that. On so the qualitative research, this is something we can say where the value judgment is something different. Here the quantification comes last, or rather many times this quantification may not come also. But as because ultimately we have to say something, so in case of quality research, also we have to take the help of uh, different tools like obviously Atlas TI, MVO, so different types of um, tools for quality research and many times you can quantify also or the quality of research is very much helpful for theoretical development or theory development and specifically for the longitudinal studies or any studies where you have to judge the or values or something which essentially you cannot qualify like as user satisfaction or all these things. So in that case, quality of research so there is always this kind of paradox. Whenever you are talking about the so as for example, in case of user satisfaction level of the matrix, or whenever you are going for measuring the customer satisfaction level, whenever you are actually specifying the very term satisfaction. So obviously here comes the concept of quality. 
quality, that is satisfaction level, cannot be measured by any such kind of quantifiable parameter in that sense. So you have to find out your parameter, you have to make this one. That is up to this to this. This is with this I would call not satisfied. Up to this range, I would call that one is some satisfied. But here so moderately satisfied, partially satisfied, there might have some bit of controversy. So that's why the quality to research is rather interpretive one and many times its results are rather interpretive. So but still in our research practice we do have both the things. And in <coughs> experimental psychology. In experimental psychology we usually go for the laboratory experimental control environment. The field environment, natural observation in the real world, non manipulated IVs also, so something is there. So we usually do it. And regarding experimental psychology, you see some of the things that are field experiment, the real world, not created for compared with uh, natural observation in the real world. And this thing. Many times, all these things are not required, but still an experimental psychology. Now observe the behavior. Uh, that is what whenever we, we are going for observing someone. Uh, here the observer behavior. So observer objective records behavior in the real world. So, spontaneous behavior in natural settings like field one study. And this is rather you can say a spontaneous behavior that is it should not be any structured one, it should not be prior made, it should not be made up or rather something uh, instrumental engineer. So this there should be the observer must say something, must give you the output, the raw data, that they should have a spontaneous behavior. And then you see the systematic observation. That systematic observation, that is what you can go for that one. So suppose you are measuring that one, the real style or rather the hygiene style. So you have to go for that one from the very morning and whether they are actually at their active branch or not, or whether they are actually washing their hands or not, whether they are at their breakfast before taking the breakfast their hands and when they are taking the lunch or whether they are trying to Nothing or so these are rather the system transition and spontaneous behavior is something that different that is uh, whenever we're asking that one which particular should we use today and they're saying that you know I'm just saying anyone asks that one which job he was today uh, to let's say something you know, so this is what and participant and non-participant observation that is actually where they are or the observer himself is also participating and many times he is not participating, he is just moving that way. So next one is participant observation. The observer himself is taking part in the situation being studied where carrying out the research. So the observer as a researcher, researcher himself is rather taking a part in the situation, he is being studied while carrying out the research and non-participant observation, the observer is not part of the situation being studied, so he is not a part, he is, it can be a control environment, so obviously a control environment, a control entire environment, so we can go for that one, the observer is obviously not a part of any, so, so he is just one supervisor, seeing that one. And you know in research method we do have a lot of things I told you <coughs> and just right now I'm doing that one the word observation. The observer say however the presence of the researcher and their behavior is being observed. This is a word observation. That is they always know that one. There is something so this is just like you have a CC camera, a CCTV camera, and you already declared that one that is a CCTV camera is there. You are rather always under the surveillance of a CCTV camera and whoever is um, actually passing by and whoever is doing anything and within that CCTV camera surveillance. Uh, with the observation, overt observation, his behavior might be something like that. He might act, he might not act spontaneously. His behavior might not be very spontaneous because he, he is already in an understanding that all his activities are rather moving, they can't do 
with theory that there are some bright eyes who are observing that and so this is the over, over observation and covert observation is there here the participants are not airmen about the presence of the researcher and they agree so I think you have uh, in your mind. Uh, I think you can remember recollect this one from your experiences that there was a show of that I could not believe that right now this show is there in the television. <coughs> and so let me tell you the big pause. It was always I illustrated that one from the organizers of this big pause show. That is the employees, uh, the participants are always always being observed by some methods like that. But uh, they know this one, that is the television camera is there. And they were saying that one, participants do not know which places where the cameras are either fixed. And, and that's the way we are getting that one, that is what they are performing. Uh, within the range of the camera, within the prime lines of the camera and some kind of advantage you know, they were showing. But it may not be true, that is what, that can be some data of overt behavior by knowing this one fully, the camera is there here, the camera itself is representing that of surface present. And that's what they do this thing or rather they are being paid for doing that particular play uh, just to entertain the customers of the television course. Uh, next one the methods. So we can go for participant observation in that one. How we go for this one that is the creating diagrams, chart maps, numerical data, written, audio, photo, video recording, like what right now I am doing, and interviews and other such questions. And the structured observation, unstructured observation. So you can go for that one. The observation structured already. You know that one. You found the performance sample. That is what we are going to do. What will come after uh, another, and what they have to do is the structured one and unstructured. You saw it. You were there, and you started firing, shooting at the push. So you started doing their behaviors and. Then the case study is also one particular thing the way the rich detail and excellent theory development is usually done and there are the disadvantages also in case studies and the last one but not the least I'm talking about the content analysis here the key steps are the unit of analysis the content Sample the units of the time, so units of the kind analysis. As for example, you know, whenever you are going for analyzing the content like application of computing in, the, in a particular discipline, so first of all, you define the unit of analysis that is, which are the areas of computing, or rather, what we are talking about computing, what are the things that will be included in the work. Anything and then sample it. If you cannot do the whole space or whole thing, whole content for analysis, then you sample that one, then code it, coding the sample unit that is which one is rather treated more, which one is not treated more, like tally mark that one, draw inference, and then manifest it or like that. So, what I told you in this series of slides. That is, research is something where observation plays a big role. And while you are 